Okay, hit it. What you're looking at is a carbon fiber shotgun slug. That's right. And this could only come from the mind of Tim from Tactical G Code. Tim first contacted me about a year ago and said he wanted to create an aluminum shotgun slug for me and have me test fire it. Since then, he has created a great number of very unusual and very creative and well machined projectiles that we have shot. I suggested to him that he really needed to film these things being made and post them on YouTube so that I could refer my viewers to see how they're made because that's really interesting and usually he will shoot these things first usually months before we even get them and you can kinda get a preview of what rounds will be shooting in the future so Tim's channel has become a very important part of my channel because he's provided so many wonderful things for us to shoot so be sure to subscribe to his channel because his viewers are often a big part of his design process and he's supposed to have a pretty cool giveaway soon too and now back to the carbon fiber shotgun slug obviously it's influenced by the design of an air rifle pellet except it doesn't have a hollow cavity in the back and the reason for that is because it needs that added strength and it the carbon fiber is so light in itself it doesn't need to be hollowed out to create the lightweight skirt and of course a pellet needs to be nose heavy and that's done by adding a heavy carbide penetrator core. That's right, these are designed to go through AR-500 armor plate. We already know that the air rifle pellet shape works out of a shotgun very well. Now the only thing we really don't know is if these will survive the massive G-shock of being shot out of a shotgun and if those carbide cores will stay in place because sometimes just inertia will knock them out as the round is fired. For this test we'll be using three off-the-shelf shells. This is a federal low brass shell rated at about 1250 feet per second pushing one ounce of lead. Now this is a Rio shell and it's pushing about one and a sixteenth ounce of lead at about 1250 feet per second also. And then finally we have a Rio high brass this is pushing one and a quarter ounce of lead at 1250 feet per second we'll first load up the federal low brass shell we really didn't know what the carbon fiber slugs would do if they would survive the g-shock and all that we wanted to start out with something kind of light and give that a try if it could go through the armor plate with a low brass shell that says a lot for this test, we'll be shooting through a rifled choke tube through our Benelli Nova. Darren hit the plate dead center, but no penetration on this shot. Okay, let's have a little review of the high-speed footage. I'm compiling this video a little bit different this time, and let me know if you like it better this way, or if you like all the high-speed footage from all the shots at the end as kind of a summary. Shot at 1200 frames per second, you can see that slug flying very straight and true through the air. I put a little marking on there with a gold magic marker so you can see if it's rotating or not. And it definitely is rotating. For shot two, we'll use a little more powerful shotgun shell. The biggest difference with this though is it has a slight chamfer on the nose of the carbide core. Let's see if that is an important factor. Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Once again, very impressive accuracy. Darren was aiming at the center of the plate and only hit it just to the left of the first shot. But look at the sand being kicked up in the box. That's an important clue. Now once again we're seeing very very stable flight through the air. Very flat, no wobbling around. Just very good flight characteristics. 
The velocity of this slug is very similar to the first one. The biggest difference, remember, is that kind of a taper nose on the carbide slug or the core. That smaller cross section puts more energy in a smaller part of the plate. And let's have a little look-see here and see what kind of damage we got. You can see there's a small hole coming out of the back of the plate and an entry hole in our box of sand. We'll check that box to see what kind of fragments are in there after we're done testing. And finally, we have the high brass shell. The difference with this one, the carbide core sticks out a little further, but it's still flat. There's no chamfering on it, no point. And as you will see, that'll be a very important data point. I'll try to go a little bit lower so I can get a wave. Yeah, clean spot. Once again, beautiful flight, very flat trajectory. And he was aiming a little bit low to get away from the, the center where it's been shot a few times. So they're definitely going where he's aiming. A lot of people have a belief that a high brass shell gives you much more velocity, much more power, but we're not seeing that at all. It's very similar speeds between all three shells. Now let's look at the damage. We'll peel some of the rubberized coating away from the back of the plate. This is the back side. Uh, Darren is finding some fragments of metal or the carbide. Not sure what. That's shot number three with the high brass. You can see the uh, plate material had been pushed out a little bit. Didn't go all the way through. This is the rubberized coating that collects the bullet fragments that we peeled off the front of the plate. You can see a core left right there from shot number three. Shot number one left a dent in it. Shot number two pierced it. Shot number three almost pushed all the way through. This is the box. You can see there's one big hole in the top from shot number two. And this is what Darren found in that big old box of sand. This is a piece of the armor plate that got ripped out, pushed out by shot number two. Also, he found some fragments of the carbide penetrator. But as you can see, having that smaller profile of the, of the chamfered nose makes a big difference. Let's compare the speed with a lead slug with a high brass and the carbon fiber slug, also high brass. You'll see that the velocities are almost the same. While it's true that velocity defeats body armor, and that velocity is typically about 3,000 feet per second for a normal rifle bullet. But as we can see here, it's also possible to defeat it at much lower velocities, but using a material that is harder than the plate. I hope you found this video fun and interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my playlist, Supersonic Solution. We have everything there from the inane to more serious projectiles that were engineered for us to shoot. Many of these ideas were submitted to us by viewers in the comments section, and I'm sure you'll find a lot of amusement and a lot of educational value in these.